Anglo Pacific is a non precious metals royalty player listed in London and in Toronto. And it says it is shifting its focus towards. Well, what many people think will be 21st century metals, um, including cobalt. The company just added a massive cobalt stream from Voices Bay. Um, that's the Inco mine in Newfoundland. And this will increase its exposure to that metal, which is used in electric batteries in a big way, to about 50%, according to RBC. We're joined by the company's CEO, Mark Bishop Laflesh. Thanks very much for coming on the show, Mark. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. So you're you're sort of like a Franco Nevada or Wheat and Precious, but you're just not in gold and silver. That's right. The business model is identical, royalties and streams, uh, but our focus, as you mentioned, is a basket of commodities covering the universe of non-precious metals, and beyond cobalt, of course, includes a number of commodities that are absolutely essential to achieving the energy transition. The big one right now is cobalt. You just uh, purchased a stream on the Voices Bay mine for just over $200 million US. Can you tell us who was the vendor? Who sold you that, that stream? Yeah, that stream was acquired from a, a private equity group. Um, and at the time, we had a huge amount of conviction that you know, cobalt price, uh, which at the time was trading below $20 per pound, had a lot of legs to run. Uh, and today, 18 months later, cobalt prices are just under $40 per pound, so almost doubled in 18 months. We couldn't be happier mm -hmm. with the performance of that underlying asset to date. And we do think that, more generally, there's, there's a lot more upside and kind of tracks the broader momentum that we have seen in our business over the last three quarters beyond just cobalt as well. RBC reckons that something like 50% of your net asset value will now be driven by cobalt. Yeah, that's right. And I think longer term, we're keen to maintain as much exposure, you know, 50, 60, 70% to base metals, which we see as including cobalt. And as we add more royalties and streams into our portfolio, that cobalt exposure will likely decrease slightly. Mm -hmm. That being said, for folks who are constructive and um, who, who are, are looking for uh, producing co cobalt exposure, uh, Anglo Pacific is pretty unique. It's very difficult to get that direct exposure in other listed royalty companies and or even mining companies. You still have a bit of coking coal and thermal coal. For example, you have um, an investment in that Kestrel mine for coking coal in Australia, about 6% of your NAV, according to RBC. You have some thermal coal as well. Are you going to drop the coal, do you think? Eight years ago, Anglo Pacific was almost 100% coal. Mm -hmm. And since then, we strategically took the view that we should reposition our portfolio um, to commodities ultimately that will be required for a more sustainable future. Uh, we've since exited thermal coal, and our strategy is to run down met coal such that by 2026, we'll have taken a portfolio that, as I said, was 100% coal to by 2026 being almost 100% exposure to commodities like copper, nickel, cobalt, vanadium, mm -hmm. uranium, all these commodities that ultimately have a huge part to play in achieving global net zero targets. You have another cobalt investment in Brazil. It's a nickel cobalt play. Can you tell us about that? I mean, that, that's entirely consistent with the thematic I've just described in that mm -hmm. our exposure to that project we have the right to deploy another $70 million to fund the construction of that project. The, the company is looking to produce 24,000 tons of nickel per year. And not only that, it's a type of nickel, um, MHP product, which can flow directly into a supply chain for battery precursor material. So that's something that we're eyeing very carefully as we see a huge amount of potential and shareholder value creation. You're showing up on my Bloomberg screen for the Toronto listing as having a yield of just over 4%. What is your dividend policy? Yeah, currently, we have a policy of paying out uh, 7p per year, which is roughly 9 US dollar cents per annum. And we are yielding amongst the highest royalty and streaming companies uh, globally. Um, that under dividend has been underpinned by well, well covered uh, earnings and furthermore has been paid for, for a number of years. But as we look forward into the future, we are seeing a number of opportunities to grow our royalty exposure 
and to keep doing more to position our businesses as the go-to royalty and streaming company focused on non-precious metals, but specifically those commodities, as I mentioned, that are really required to achieve decarbonization of energy consumption and net zero. Now, I'm just looking at an RBC report from late April, um, and they, they have an outperform on you. They have your revenue for this year at about $123 million, dropping next year to $78 million. Why would there be a drop in revenue next year? That's in part a function of our strategy to run out the metallurgical coal. Okay. And so what we've been doing over the last six or seven years, effectively, is positioning the business such that through cycle, our company has a stable baseline of income that fully replaces a through cycle contribution from metallurgical coal. Uh, we are of course looking at multiple opportunities to, to keep growing our royalty portfolio and of course looking for opportunities that will contribute to delivering income growth beyond that uh, baseline that I just mentioned. Now your market cap in Canada, um, just north of $500 million Canadian. Where does most of your trading happen though? Is it in Toronto or in London? We've seen more trading coming out through on the TSX line, uh, mm. but you're, you're, the majority to date is in the London market. Right. And tell us about your own uh, background. You went to Western University. Are you originally Canadian yourself? That's right. I'm uh, half French Canadian, half British. So a man split between two worlds. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, I, I have my roots in, in Canada and in part uh, maybe why we've gravitated towards doing so many transactions in Canada. Uh, we follow the opportunities, but to date our portfolio actually is almost 60% by exposure to Canadian assets or Canadian companies. And you spent, um, sorry. Sorry to cut you off there. And you spent um, a while in investment banking and leverage finance at Citi. So uh, it, kind of interesting, isn't it? It's emerged as a very pop popular model, hasn't it, for mining investors, the royalty and streaming. It has, and really the opportunity for Anglo-Pacific Group in many ways is to provide investors de-risked exposure to the commodities that are going to be required mm -hmm. to uh, drive you know, net zero. Um, but on top of that, uh, you know, there are just not that many folks or royalty companies actually targeting the space. The vast mm -hmm. majority of the precious, are, are precious metals focused. So we have a great amount of runway to keep growing this business such that investors who ultimately are not comfortable taking direct risk on individual mining companies can get that exposure in a de-risk way through Anglo Pacific Group, which of course is a royalty and streaming model. I think we all know that in a very inflationary world, mm -hmm. the royalty and streaming model doesn't have direct exposure to operating costs, inflation, capital costs, inflation, environmental liabilities you know, growing mm -hmm. over time. So it's a very defensive model and our, our strategy is, you know, in time, our vision really is to become that go-to play.